what kind of relationship must exist between property owner and his agent? Easy one, 20 seconds. 30 seconds. Okay, I gave you guys 30 seconds. Okay, first questions are just, just to warm up. Okay, but no question, no worries. Okay, so let's uh, kickstart and talk a little bit about these few answers over here. Right, so basically, uh, between the the agent, okay, and the client or the property owner, okay, so basically bilateral is two la by it means two way, right? Tripartite is three, unilateral is one. Okay, there's no uh this is, uh the the last one designated relationship is just a, a a trick answer. Okay, so just remember bilateral is two two way, tripartite is three, and then unilateral is one. Very as simple as that. Okay, just remember the words. Okay, by try and uni, right? Okay, good. We have uh Rob topping the chart for our first question, and let's go for the next one. Which of the following methods can result in the establishment of an agency relationship? See whether you know. Okay, so um, this question actually is quite easy. Uh, so just to share with all of you, uh, basically to establish uh, a relationship, right, uh, between the, the two parties, uh, it can be in the form of a written assignment. That means uh, like maybe like through the exclusive form that we sign, uh, orally, uh, also can like uh if if the person gives you uh approval right uh, verbally that's also uh can be considered right implied also it really uh, it also can so say for example later we'll talk a little bit about how sometimes we by by giving certain uh saying certain statement or giving certain instructions it actually implied that um, the person allows you to market their property so in this particular question Please remember that to form a relationship between two parties, uh, it can be via written, it can be also verbally, which is oral assignment, and implied assignment is like assumed to be something like that, right? All three ways uh, can actually form the establishment of the agency. Okay, we still have Rob on top. Well done, let's catch up with him and let's go to the next one. Okay, so there's an agent who pre presents info to the part something to the public and then it actually turned out to be like uh, uh, not true. But when she's presenting the information, she actually really, at that point of time, believe it's true. So let's look at uh, all the different answers over here. Fraudulent misrepresentation, the, the red color one. Uh, this one is actually, um, I would say, the most serious, right? Because uh, this, this fraudulent misrepresentation, right, is actually the agent actually knows that it is uh, false, but actually still... Uh, uh, uh like okay so basically if something like for example if i know the valuation is this amount but i lie uh, otherwise to the client that means the person give false information knowingly right so for this particular question right over here uh, the answer is innocent misrepresentation because when the agent is giving the, the information at a point of time he or she actually believes that the the information given is actually correct Right. So the answer for this question is innocent misrepresentation. Okay. So negligent misrepresentation, which is happen um a uh, quite common kind of misrepresentation when agent get gets into problems is they never check properly. Right. They never check the facts properly and then they carelessly just uh, give information. Uh, the green one ignorant mi misrepresentation is actually. Um, it's just a trick answer here, okay, to, to actually uh, trick you, okay? So anyway, answer is innocent misrepresentation. Let's go for the next one. Ah, good, we have Lady J coming up. Let's move on to question number five. What interest does a beneficiary hold? Okay, most of you got the correct answer. So basically for this topic, right, I just want to uh, encourage all of you to really, really try your best to understand and grasp the, the concept between uh, all the different type of interests that we have. Uh, basically, we're talking about uh, uh, of, uh, just like about around four of them, right? So basically legal interest, for, for example, for this particular question, the beneficiary who actually don't hold the legal interest because the name, right, is actually not inside the property yet. So who has actually the name is actually the, the trustee 
so for this case itself, the beneficiary holds the equitable interest. Okay, later we'll talk, be talking a little bit about reversionary interest. I'll give you some example and what's the meaning of remainder interest as well. Uh, so I'm going to give you some simple examples or more practical examples than what we actually face in our uh, real estate world. Um, so re reversionary interest and remainder interest, right, is, um, uh, I'll give you an example of like FICE organization, who is a developer, right? So for each organization, sometimes and some of their land uh, plots that they hold, they are freehold land plot. However, they sell the freehold land plot uh, as a 99 uh, condominium or con 99 development uh, to the consumers, to the set, uh, to the buyers, right? So end of 99 years, this interest actually at the end of this leasehold 99, the, the FICE organization will actually take back the interest again. So in this way, uh, they, they actually hold a reversionary interest, okay? Right, so how about remainder interest? Uh, something similar to what future interest is, right? That uh, at the, is, is like the example that I mentioned to you, at the end of the 99 leasehold uh, period, um, that part, from the from the time that the 99 year lease expires uh from then on five organization organization actually have the remaining interest uh in of course it's a freehold uh property so it will be in fee simple so they get, uh that that part of the remainder remainder interest goes back to five organization okay all right so hopefully i had uh, i gave you a very simple example to understand right but just as the question says uh, trustee, beneficiary, so beneficiary, uh, usually the child doesn't have the name or uh, below 21 years old, doesn't have legally their name inside the property, so they don't hold a legal interest. So remember, for legal interest, your name must be inside, okay? Right? So equitable interest is the answer for this particular question. Right, Jeff, well done. Let's go on to the question number six. Easy one. This one is a very easy, Okay. Uh, what is a legal right against a type property? Type property that can be used as a collateral to ensure the repayment of that. So basically, is uh between two parties, right? The borrower and the bank. Okay. So uh basically, the the bank holds this legal right. Okay. Uh, to ensure that the borrower will repay the loan or the debt that that is being uh taken okay so just take note this is actually a very simple question because this one is a definition right a lien is basically the legal right against any type of property right that can be used as a collateral so maybe the two parties that's involved in this uh uh in this question will be an example bank and the borrower okay so just take note all right we have more people coming into the game Right, let's go to the next one. What can be used to protect a person's interest in a property or land such as their right to purchase, sell, or transfer? Mm -hmm. you got this correct. This is uh, very easy. Okay, so usually when a property is being transacted, the lawyer will lodge a caveat, right, uh, to protect the buyer's interest in the property or land, and that's why we will be able to some, uh, see the, the, the details, right, uh, actually from, from in list. Okay, that's when the caveat has been lodged. So this is quite simple. So usually the lawyer will be the person that will lodge the caveat for the client. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, so this question, think carefully. This has to be the most divided answer, which I also already expected. So if you do have your pen or paper or your iPad, if you just uh, try to write down a little bit of uh, this pointers that I'm going to give to you now, okay, right, um, so basically when we, when we talk about uh, the question first, so there's an exclusive agreement, uh, but it ended, but the, client, the, the seller or the client allowed the viewing to continue, so in this situation, the agency is said to exist, so basically first thing you need to understand that even though the exclusive has ended, um, the client or the principal, in this case, we call the person, right, uh, did not say to stop. So, in a way, it is assumed you can continue. Okay, so you can, uh, so the agent will continue to bring the, the, the potentials to view the property itself. So, let's talk about um, basically what is the authority of the, uh, what kind of authority that agents have. So, basically, there are two main cate categories 
that the agents have first is actual okay actual authority so it's by ex is either through express or implied what is express just so we had one question on express which is either written right uh or verbal right i can actually uh appoint the agent through these two ways <coughs> either by uh writing or also through verbally right all right, and the, the next category that you need to understand is actually apparent authority. So what exactly is apparent authority? So usually in apparent authority, there has two different uh, categories, which is estoppel and ratification. And under estoppel and ratific uh, ratification, there is often a, there will always be a third party involved. Okay, there'll be a third party involved. So if you look at the question itself over here, um, in this particular question, right, uh, you, we said that the, the agency is said to continue to exist through ratification because the person or the client, the principal, allowed the viewings to continue, the agent will continue to bring the potential, right, uh, to, to the viewings to continue, all right? Okay, so hopefully you can understand a little bit uh, between the two diff two main uh, categories, which is actual versus apparent, right? So under actual, there'll be expressed and implied. Under apparent, there'll be either estoppel or ratification. All right, those of you who got the correct answer, well done. Which is a leading trust? Most of you got this correct. Okay, so pretty simple. This is actually um, a definition. Uh, okay, uh, so basically, testamentary trust, right? The one in red color, right? Uh, you basically, it's, a, it's an example of it is when you will it to your children, right? And you, the children can actually own it only after um, they die. Okay, so uh, inter vivos trust is actually a living trust. So main, uh, main two uh, uh, real uh, uh, phrase here that we need to know the differences is actually the red color and the orange one. The other two uh, is actually trick, trick answer. Okay, All right. So red one, testamentary trust. Okay, so you will it to your child, and the child will only own it when um, you, like the parent okay passes away. Inter vivos is uh, living trust. Okay, so don't need to actually pass away you can actually view it uh, the child can still own it usually own it when they are 21 years old okay all right amazing eagle catching up which are the definite requirements when creating trust okay well done most of you got the correct answer so just take note when you create a trust you need to have the following certainty of intention that means who do you want to leave the property to all right second of all which property the address okay the certainty of the subject matter okay which property what exactly is the address a unique number makes um certainty of objects who is the person you want to leave it to so when you're creating a trust you need to have all three elements which is uh the intention the subject matter which is the property of and uh, certainty of objects which is the person so answer for this particular question is very easy all of the above let's move on okay so earlier on we talked about this uh between trustee and beneficiary uh so to help you understand trustee is usually the parent beneficiary is the ch child correct not and the child is uh, uh, why there's a trustee and beneficiary is usually when the child, uh, the parent buys the property under the child's name when the child is uh, uh, younger than 21 years old. So remember, we talk about what is legal interest. So trustee, right, will have the legal interest because the name is actually inside the property. Because at this current moment, when they have a trust, the beneficiary is actually a minor, is lesser than 21 years old. So the name can, uh, the beneficiary at this moment when it's uh, younger than 21 years old will only have equitable interest, okay? So to help you understand a little bit, 
better remember like parent and a child and then the parent bought the uh, property for the child because the child is less than 21 years old and losing trust okay all right let's move on he divided uh usually that's what happened when we come to this question okay uh try your best okay i'm also going to try my best to explain this a little bit uh more okay uh so mortgage or so so basically two parties involve again mortgage or and the mortgagee hope you know which is which okay so uh a way to help you remember is mortgage or right we have this job to say that what you play you pay until your jaw drop so mortgage or is the borrower mortgagee is the bank okay so basically the borrower and the bank so i say again the mortgage or is the borrower and the mortgagee is the bank right so what happens what's the relationship between these two person right uh basically they have the answer is in both legal or equitable interest uh simply because right uh when the borrower borrows a sum of money uh, the loan from the bank right the, the person the borrower or the mortgage or will actually assign this interest right uh in exchange for this loan Okay, so both the both these parties they actually hold uh, legal or equ uh, equitable interest to the property itself. Okay, as the mortgage or which is the borrower borrower continues to pay uh, their instalment, right? They will be taking back more and more uh, of the uh, uh, the legal interest, right? Uh, until he or she fully pays um, the whole entire loan, and then um, they will then be the official legal uh owner holding the legal interest to the property itself and then of course the bank will then relinquish okay and usually that's the part whereby uh the, the bank uh, we take as as person who is uh took the loan we will take back what we call the title deed all right okay so hopefully that helps you a little bit in the understanding because this concept over here most of the res are uh, not able to understand all right let's move on to the next one which are the four unities of a joint tenancy okay, most of you go got the correct answer for this one which is good okay so basically joint tenancy right uh, for joint tenancy the key word that you need to understand is when they have joint tenancy means these people uh, inside this tenancy they don't have they have undivided share okay undivided share and in a joint tenancy so basically the the short form or the acronym that you use to uh, remember will be pitt right p stands for possession right so basically you own the whole property together right because there's no distinct share you own the whole property everything is together right so the interest right is also talking about the share itself there's no distinct share that means they own it together uh title if they are going to sell the property sell the property they need to sell it together right and time means they need to do it again at the same time together so joint tenancy undivided share no distinct share everything that they need to do they co-own the whole entire thing on uh, as a whole okay everything they need to do they need to do together so this is uh the meaning of the joint tenancy uh and you need to have these four unities p-i-t-t -T, possession interest title and time okay let's go on to the next one <laughs> Okay, so which uh which of the following describe the method of bringing a joint tenancy? So just now we talk about what's the meaning of joint tenancy to an end. So um when there's a bankruptcy, right? They cannot pay. It will also bring the tenancy, uh, joint tenancy to an end. Uh, when there's a court order, for example, a divorce, it will also bring the joint tenancy to an end. Okay, partitioning. Okay, so basically, if um, they agree, okay, uh, they agree to partition, meaning to say they change it to uh, tenancy in common, whereby they hold distinct shares, uh, the parties uh, hold uh, the, um, different, sh they can hold different share amount, which is uh, tenancy in common, it will also bring uh, the joint tenancy to an end. So answer is all of the above. 
And let's go on to the next one. Okay, so most of you got it correct, but let me just have a quick uh, explanation because some of our friends over here didn't get the correct answer. Okay, so just now we talked about joint tenancy, basically undivided share. Tenancy in common, they have uh, distinct shares between the parties itself, like example 50-50, 90-10. Okay, this is called tenancy in common. Okay, uh, But what do these two types of uh, uh, joint tenancy and tenancy, what do they have uh, as a shared characteristic? Uh, basically, let's talk about the others first. That means the wrong answers. Okay, so basically title, right? Uh, they can sell... Uh, one uh, for tenancy in common, they can sell the share. Okay, so definitely different from joint tenancy. Joint tenancy cannot sell the share. How about the interest, the one in yellow? Right, so basically, uh, because uh, they have undivided share for joint tenancy, right, they have to make the decision also together. So, you talk about these two, right, interest and time, right? Uh, so, basically, right, uh, the, the only answer to this whereby they share the same characteristic, right, is possession. They own the property together, okay? Both joint tenancy and tenancy in common. So, the rest of the other uh, answers over here, right, is actually different between um, tenancy, joint tenancy and tenancy in common. So, these are not the correct answers, okay? Let's go to the next one. Which of the following creates a valid contract? Okay, this one good. Most of you got it correct. In order for that there to be a valid contract, right? There must definitely be first in the sequence. Okay, there must be an offer. Then the other party must accept. Okay, then there must be consideration and then intention to create legal relationship. Okay, so uh, this is actually quite simple. So most of you got it correct. Okay, so let's move on. Amazing Eagle, well done, leading the way. Let's see whether any of you can uh, overtake. So which of the following does not terminate an offer? So when there is a counter offer, right, then the offer, that, uh, the old offer is no longer valid. Ma. Okay, right, so definitely it terminates the offer when there is a new counter offer, right? So again, same thing, when somebody gives you an offer and then passes, subsequently passes away, then also cannot really, cannot continue. So also no longer valid. Okay, revocation is the person gives the offer, then change your mind. Okay, so change your mind. So um, uh, you also terminate the offer. After they change your mind, definitely, then they don't want to continue already, right? So answer for this is consideration. Right, so a consideration is uh, at this current uh, is is an offer, right? Uh, not at the acceptance uh, stage yet. Okay, so answer for this question is consideration. Okay, let's take a look. What rights does the landlord not have? Okay, so just to let y'all know when the uh when the what kind of rights that the landlord have. So actually, the landlord uh, is uh should be able to, to be able to enter the premises at least twice a year to inspect the state of repair or if they want right if they want to exercise the rights to do that they can uh, they can enter the premises if rental not paid in 30 days they can do that as well right uh, and landlord may also enter at reasonable times to comply with public notice so these three uh, items over here are the rights of the landlord uh, they can actually do so okay so basically why is answer request for letter of intent and collect deposit is uh, is not a right for the landlord it's basically for this request for letter of intent and collect deposit is basically a process this is actually a process for rental okay it's not the rights of the landlord it's actually a process for the, the uh, tenancy okay uh, it's just a process okay that we practice it's not the rights of the landlord okay so hope we can understand that. Let's move on. Which of the following is a consideration? Okay, great. Most of you um, got the correct answer. All right, so which of the following is a consideration? So for an offer to be considered, there must be some form of fee, and we call this fee the option fee. Okay, as simple as that. All right? So when you give an offer, we will also come together with a fee and the fee is called option fee. Okay, let's go. Which of the following interests does a buyer have before the completion of sales? 
Yeah, because uh, you realize I ask quite a lot of questions on interest because I think uh, from the past few times when I conducted uh, this session, I realized that uh, many of you will have uh, difficulty understanding this. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about um, this question. Which of the following interests does a buyer have uh, before before the completion of sales? So before the completion, um, the buyer don't have a, a legal interest because the, the, the sales not completed yet. So only when the sales completed, then the, uh, the, the, the new buyer will then have legal interest. So before the completion, the kind of interest that this person has is equitable. Because before the completion, the legal right still lies with the owner or the seller of the property. Okay, so for this particular question, of course, it's not really related to uh, uh, re re reversionary interest, right? Uh, future interest doesn't apply for uh, this particular completion or sales between a buyer and a seller. Okay, right. So just take note. Remember, legal the name has to be officially inside. So prior the completion, the uh, before you go to the lawyer office to collect everything. Okay, that's not uh, legal yet. All right. The answer is unilateral. So remember our very first few questions, we have something like that. Uni is how many way? One way, right? So when I give an offer to you, it's a one way to, uh, direction. So the answer is unilateral. Bilateral is two way. Tripart uh, tripartite is three. Okay. Uh, of course, an, an offer is uh, nothing to do with it being exclusive. Lah, huh? Okay, so uh, anybody can give an offer, right? So, uh, so remember, when somebody gives an offer from one party to the other, right, it's one way, unilateral. Okay, amazing ego, still leading the pack. A valid contract can become voidable if vitiating factors are to occur. What are the possible circumstances? Ah, good. Okay, so this one, most of you got it correct. So we'll just do it quickly. So, uh, so most of you know the valid contract. Right, so the contract can be void uh, if there was a misrepresentation, meaning to say that actually the unit is 990 uh, square feet, uh, uh, but actually the person say otherwise, okay, this, this could potentially void the whole entire contract. Or uh, if the person uh, actually went into the uh, contract uh, under stress, under threat, this is under duress, also can void the contract. Undue influence, like under the influence of alcohol, also can void. So answer is all of the above. So most of you, wait, most of you got it correct. So basically, when uh, an agent advertising uh, advertises a property on public guru, uh, this is called uh, an invitation to treat. So basically, I'm inviting people to get in touch with me, contact me to to find out more, to view the property. So it's called invitation to treat. Okay. Okay, well done. Let's move on. Okay, read carefully. Yeah. Uh, some of you, uh, why I said earlier on to, to caution you to read carefully. Okay, so let's read the question again together. It says that J pays 80% of a condo bought together with G and G pays the rest. They are likely to co-own the condo as what kind of uh is it tenancy in common or is it jo or joint tenancy okay so basically right just give you an example when a husband and wife buys a property together do they always split down and pay 50 50 um, not really right sometimes the husband pay a little bit more sometimes the wife pays a little bit more but this has got no bearing on how they co-own the property is it going to be tenancy in common or is it going to be joint tenancy so i say again tenancy in common is a that there is a distinct share joint tenancy means um they they, they don't have uh, they have undivided share so when i say they bought to get when these two person bought the property together it can be tenancy in common or joint tenancy 
okay it is not uh it's not just tenancy in common uh so just an example like what i mentioned to you what uh, a married couple husband and wife buy together uh they may not pay 50 50 so but it doesn't mean that they they are owning the property in tenancy uh, uh, in common or, uh, or joint tenancy can be either right so the answer is tenancy in common or joint tenancy okay you understand okay let's go last few questions who can rent a one bedroom condominium So this question is to test you uh, on the legal age for someone to actually uh, rent a property or to sign a tenancy agreement. So anyone from 18 years old and above can rent a property and enter into a tenancy agreement. Okay, well done. Okay, which of the foreign person can own a property? So just now we talk about rental. Let's talk about owning a property now okay all right i think some of you you all anyhow press uh, without mental capacity of course cannot own uh, so basically why this question is to just make sure you guys understand for renting we're talking about 18 years and above for owning is 21 years and above and of course to buy a property the person or the buyer needs to have mental capacity so as simple as that so these two questions is just to help you remember for renting 18 years old and above for buying owning is 21 years old and above needs to have mental capacity okay all right last few questions for you to catch up with amazing ego okay completion of a condo is on 31st of august one day before MCST sent an invoice out to replace cost of the leave, who should pay? so you see just this is also uh, a similar in uh, question earlier on i mentioned prior the completion of the sales okay who is still the legal person is the seller of the condo so the seller is still liable to pay for this replacement cost of the leave okay so definitely it's not the buyer because the uh, although the buyer has equitable interest but not yet taken over okay all right so just take note the seller of the property itself is still the legal owner okay until the completion is done okay let's go to the next one ask yourself which of the following does a mortgage or not have we cannot do sorry a little bit of a mistake there which of the following can uh does the mortgager not, a, uh, not able to do okay not able to do that's a missing word but the answer should be quite easy right so which of the following rights does a mortgager not have okay so a mortgager can rent out a property so for example mortgager is the person who pay right which is actually the borrower so you buy a property, you are the borrower, you are called a mortgage owner. After you buy the property, you can rent out the property, you can renovate the property, you can wheel away the property, but you cannot foreclose a property because foreclose is the rights of the mortgagee, which is the bank. Okay? All right. Last two questions. Which of the following terminates a trust? <laughs> Okay, great. 
most of you uh, got a correct answer. So when the trust being formed, um, when you sell the property, it naturally will terminate the trust. Okay. Or when the trustee resigns the role of being a trustee, that also terminates the trust. Or when there's a court order, okay, that can uh, uh, also terminate the trust. So the answer for this particular question is all of the above. Okay. All right, last one. Let's go. Which of the following terminates an agency? Most of you got the correct answer. So, um, by agreement, so if, for example, when there's a relationship form or even when there's an exclusive form, right, uh, both the agent or the principal can actually, by mutual agreement, terminate the, the relationship, okay, between the agency. Uh, exclusive under usually our exclusive is usually in, uh, in our field of work, it's usually three months, right? Uh, so, end of three months, it can also end, right, this, this agency relationship. Uh, revocation by the principal. So if the client is not happy with our service, they want to terminate uh, the, the relationship with the agency, also possible. Uh, similarly, this can also vice versa be terminated by agent. So we, ca we can also uh, terminate uh, an exclusive if we find that we the, age, the client is very difficult and we cannot work for the client anymore. So answer is all of the above. Okay, well done everyone. I hope uh, this short little quiz help everyone, but let's take a look. Well done, Jude. I mean, the English mean second, and of course, we have everyone. Okay, so before I hang, we just want to stop share over here. Let me just close off the window and come back. Okay. Wait on one second. Okay. Okay. So before I hand to my um colleague Belinda, Belinda, shall we give them a three minute break, Belinda? Yeah. So maybe every while we take a three minute break. Uh, feel free to continue to answer the uh the to type into the chat group, and uh now I can actually have a look at um the chat because just now I closed the window because you all see say got some black box, right? Okay, so we'll try our best to answer your questions, okay? While we take a three minute break, okay? So Belinda, we just time three minutes and then you can take over from there. Okay? Thank you everyone. Uh, hope to see you all soon and uh, hope to hear good news from you guys that you pass your exam. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I will just uh, try to scroll through your questions being asked earlier. I'll try my best to just type some answers in if I can. Okay. So three minute break, toilet break, come back very quickly for Belinda segment that you wouldn't want to miss. All right, have a good evening. Uh, keep in touch and all the best.
Ring, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. The sound is okay. Sound oh, is good. Okay. Everybody back. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Just that there's a bit of feedback from your other device. Maybe you can um uh just disconnect your audio from the other one. Let me see. Now how about still got a bit of echo. Now, you need to disconnect audio from one of your device. Yeah. Okay. Come on now. Yeah. Can you say a few more words? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Still echo. How about now? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Better. Is it better? Yes. It is better now. Is it better? Yes. Can start already. Oh, that's good. Okay. Hi, good evening everybody. Are you all back? If you are back, can you put an 8 in the chat so that I know that you are back? I see. Huh? Okay, most of them have oh, got 1, 8.8 uh, 8 some more. Huh? Okay, let me introduce myself. I'm Belinda. I'm actually uh, what from Pro, uh, Associate Group Director of Pronex as well. Uh, I have 30 years experience as a practicing realtor. Um, I actually specialize in commercial, residential, and new launches. So my forte is actually a trainer for social media marketing and sales video marketing as well. I actually run a small team. Okay, so a very small personal team, personal touch. Huh? Okay, and I hope to hear from you all once you all pass and you all can come and come on board with us 
uh, at Prodnex. Right. So today, just now, uh, my partner Rain actually covered paper one, and I am uh, she is covering paper one of the component two, right? And I will be uh, taking the paper one of the component one. Okay. Yesterday, for those who actually came and attend, uh, we have actually covered the paper two, component three, and four already, right? So now let's zoom into our paper one, component one, that is, let me see, yeah, this area, okay? This area will be our component for my segment. Right. So, encumbrance on land. Okay. Which of the following statement is false? Okay, if you know the answer, please write inside the chat room now. Let me see. Which one is false? When you are having your exam, always know the keyword. Underline the keyword. False. Every time they use true or false to treat you. So I can see a lot of D and some A's. So there are, we have about 300 over participants, but I only have a few reply. Can you all respond more? We need to be more interactive. Right. Whether right or wrong doesn't matter. You have attempt. Okay. Yes, I can start to see more D coming in. Okay. Which of the following is false? You are correct. The answer is D. A person right over a piece of land extend to only the lower airspace above the physical surface area of that land and limited to the height of a person. So you all have to know that this is the definition that is uh, which, uh, which of the following is false, right? So now, let's see. Okay, give me a minute. Huh? I actually extract this from Singapore Statute Online. Okay, and the definition is over here. You can see the definition. So it will be easier for you to understand. You need to understand. Now this day, uh, RES exam is not so straightforward. Okay, you have to understand and uh, read the question carefully. So, uh, it's actually a puzzle of surface earth so much as the subterranean space below and so much of the column of air space above the surface is reasonably used, necessary for the use and enjoyment of the land. Okay, B, as a puzzle of air space and subterranean space, whether or not held apart, from the surface of the earth. Third, only down to such depth, depth uh, below the surface earth as president may by order direct. Right. So the definition is there and the answer will be D. Right. So now let's go to question, 20, uh, question two. Land includes just now, as you read about it already, based on your understanding, choose your answer. The same thing as just now. Right. Does land include airspace above the land? Include trees? Include mineral below the land? Include buildings? So, some of them, the tricky part is this area. Right. Mineral below the land. A lot of them are very confused whether include or not include. Right. So, come back to the same article extracted. Look for it now. Mineral, does it include or not? Yes, it's all of the above. So, including mineral below the land. Do take note of that. 
Right, now we are going into lease. Just now we touched about land. Now we are going to lease. Okay, lease question three. Which of the following is correct? The, a lease give a right to exclusive possession of a property. A lease creates an interest of land. A lease is assignable. Which is correct? Write down your answer. Mm, I can see some C, some D, or B coming. Start to confuse already. A also come out already. Okay. So now let's, I have tabulate it in for you to easy remember. The differences between lease and license. Be very clear. What is lease? What is license? They are different things. So lease include all these three things. Exclusive possession, interest in land or property, assignment or contract. That means can be assignable. Okay. Unlike license, everything is no. You got no exclusive possession. You got no interest in land, and the the license cannot be assigned. So you have to remember this. So now come back to the question. Now they asking you about lease. Lease is the three of them also can correct. So easy to remember. Okay. Now let's come to license. License, which one of the following statement is false? A license creates a personal interest between the licensor and the licensee. A license allows a person to enter onto the land of another without com uh, committing a trespass. A license cannot be transferred or assigned. A person who has a license to occupy land will be able to enforce the license against a third party. So, what is the answer? Mm. Okay, now let's see your answer. Okay, I have uh, some notes on the license for you. Unlike lease, a license is not an estate in land. Thus, has no interest in land. Okay, a license is barely a permission given by the occupier of the land, which allowed licensee to use, process, or enter such land. The general rule of a license are as follow: the licensor remain in general control of the land. The license cannot be transferred or assigned public places assessed by payment. So in short, this table helps you to simplify your, for you to remember easily. So what is the answer? The answer is a person who has a license occupied, sorry, yeah. yeah over here d is the answer a person who has a license to occupy land will be able to enforce the license against a third party yeah now let's move on to question five another license question which of the following statement is false a bare license can be revoked at any time by the licensor Upon revocation of a bare license, the licensee shall decide when to leave the licensor's land. A bare licensee will become a trespasser as soon as he exceeds the scope of a bare license that has given to him. A bare licensee can never enforce his license against a third party. Remember, they are asking you for a statement that is false. So, what is bear license? Okay, short summary notes for you to remember. This is the most classical form of license where licensee is granted a privilege or permission to be on the land of the licensor. 
let me give you an example a guest being invited to a condominium for a party a bear license can be revoked at any time upon reasonable notice the licensee has no rights to assign or transfer his privilege to others without the permission of the license so right so now back to this question five which of the following statement is false is b upon revocation of a bear license the licensee shall decide when to leave the license so slant right now let's move on to another uh another license question which of the following has no valid license three month temporarily storage space that owner grants to his tenant b catherine who invited by owner to her house party c daniel's goods were not shipped due to the bad weather and he left his egg container at the port without getting a permit d tenant allowing workers into the house to carry out repair works what is your answer key in your answer wow go b and c yeah you're split between b and c is it so it's b and or c only can choose one eh, in your exam okay the answer is c very good daniel's good was not shipped due to bad weather and he had left his egg container at the port without getting a permit this is not a no this is a no valid uh license another license question which of the following is considered a license now they want you to find out a license okay a national serviceman was asked to stay in the bank a shopper who lives in a hdb flat a farmer who lives on a farm a company director who lives in the property bought under the company name so which is the which is a license think carefully oh, why got people choose bcd they ask you for one answer only is considered a license let's see the answer is a a the national serviceman was asked to stay in a bank is considered a license right now whenever you uh, encounter about the question of land lease and license you always have to make yourself very clear ask yourself is this question asking about land or is that question asking about lease or license right so you have to be very very clear of the question first don't rojak later or you go exam ah, everything rojak already right so i have already tabulated it up for your easy references so you can revise through right now we are going to touch on eastman okay eastman eastman there are a lot of questions on eastman so you need to be uh, very attentive to eastman okay in in paper one you can bound to find a lot of question on here under eastman number eight land a has a right of way now we are going to touch on right of way over the adjacent site land b which is the correct statement land b is a dominant tenement and land a is a sovereign tenement or land b is a sovereign tenement and land a is the dominant okay land b is a dominant heritage and a is a sovereign heritage land b is a sovereign sovereign uh, heritage and land a is a dominant heritage which one is correct now now let's come to the eastman and eastman is a legal interest that allow the owner of the eastman dominant tenement a right or right over the land of another that is called sovereign tenement right so you have to know the definition of uh dominant tenement and sovereign ten tenement right so now the answer will be hmm b b is this right 
Now let's go move on to question nine. Is also under Isman. Annie is the owner of a piece of land known as Plot A. Ben is the owner of a plot of land known as Plot B, which is located just beside Plot A. When Ben bought Plot B, he was aware that he was not allowed to build any structure on her own land which obstruct the lights to any house. Which of the following is correct? Which one is correct? Plot A is known as the dominant tenement while Plot B is known as the sovereign tenement. Number two, Annie enjoyed a right of light over Ben's land. A right of light is a negative easement that forbid Ben from doing something on her own land for the benefit of the owner or the dominant tenement. Number D will be an easement runs on the land. Easement runs on the land. This simply means the easement will pass on to the new owner who had just bought over the several tenement. So which is the answer? Let me see. Hmm. Let's see. Some notes for you all to remember. Just now, Eastman, I have already went through with you. Now I add on the likes, the right of likes. Okay, I summarize the right of likes for you. This is a restrictive covenant and a negative Eastman that prohibit the several tenement the burden land from building anything in obstruction of the light to the dominant tenement, such easement is also known as height restriction. Okay, easement run with the land and does not run with the person. Remember, this is very important because the subject matter is land. And the enjoyment is the usage of land and not benefit granted to a specific person that is known as Isman. I hope this is very, very clear for you all. Right. So the answer will be D. All right. Now move on to question 10. Another Isman. This Isman is the right of way. Okay, just now we got right of light, we got right of way. Mandy's property has a right of way over Nelly's property. Mandy has to build a road for Nelly. Nelly has to build a road for Mandy. Mandy is required, uh, is required to ensure that her building and land does not prevent Nelly from entering to Nelly's property. Nelly is required to ensure that her Building or land does not prevent Mandy from entering into Mandy's property. So what is the answer? Hmm, why I'm get, not getting more participation? A lot of observer. Make sure you key in some of your answer there or else I will not move on. Right. So question 10, the answer will be Nelly is required to ensure that her building or land does not prevent Mandy from entering to Mandy's property. Right. So now, under ele uh, question 11, under the new guideline of URA, diners' table cannot be placed right by the river side. You know, as Clark Key, Book Key, all that, they always place their dining tables outside their restaurant along the river. The aim is to free up the riverfront for public access. They, a lot of them, they, uh, URA don't approve them to put, but some they do. Which of the following has occurred? Eastman is removed to make room for license. B. License is removed to make room for Eastman. Both Eastman and license are removed. Both Eastman and license are not removed. What is your answer? 
Yeah, I can see B, 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 I got uh, C, A, C, D. Okay, so which is the answer? After going through so much, it's one question already. Okay, the answer is B. License is removed to make room for Eastman. Question 12. Another Eastman question. You see how important is Eastman? Right, if you don't understand Eastman well, you might uh, lose a lot of marks over here. Eastman will be this, uh, Eastman will be extinguished, terminated in any of the following way by status uh, by statutes abundant of more than 12 years by express release by implied release which one of it i can see some c some d oh got a come out some more okay so now let's see termination of eastman read on termination of eastman by state uh, statute by express release by implied release by unification of ownership right read and understand what are the differences between all these four and all these four are the termination of Eastman how you can terminate the an Eastman right so your answer will be D one two and three all of the above right question 13 another isman question and is an isman may be extinguished or terminated by the following now this one everybody should be very easy see who else not replying the right answer okay no not all answer are dia ah. <laughs> okay so uh, this is the same notes okay answer is reservation is not uh accept reservation huh? now which is not an easement which is not an easement right of passage of water electricity drainage gas sewage for development right of access to a highway right to develop land to an approved plot ratio right to light and air what is the answer mm, i can see a lot of c coming out already that's very good so you all understand right now question 15 another another question when the states reserve the right to lay pipes below your land such rights are known as utility what utility which one put your answer down very good it's known as utility eastman now question 16 another eastman question which type of legal interest in land is not automatically binding upon a purchaser of land. What is the answer? Is right of entry. Good. Okay, no more Eastman already. Enough of Eastman already. Okay, so you all have to revise on your own on Eastman. Now we are going to Covenants. Okay, a covenant is an agreement which creates an obligation. This obligation comes in the form of duty to do something, a positive covenant. Or a promise of not to do something, a negative covenant on a plot of land. This obligation is contained in a deed. Which of the following is correct? Put your answer down. Alright, now, this is the notes that I have actually uh, compiled it for you for easy to remember. A covenant may be defined as an agreement created, creating an obligation in a deed or a legal binding promise. 
the person making the promise in the contract is a conventor and the person to whom the contract is made is the conventee. The conventor is the owner of the servant tenement and the conventee is the dominant tenement. All right. So the answer will be D. Hmm, quite a number of them confused between B and D. Right. So understand the question. Now, question 18. Owner has a bungalow and decide to use the land to build two semi-detached houses, A and B. He stay at A and so B to Lin. However, he wants Lin to share the cost of the fence maintenance between them. What can he do? Write down your answer. What can he do? I can see A, D. It's still split between A and D. K. Now, let's move on and see. K. You can actually create a covenant in the sales and purchase agreement. Right. Now, question 19. The owner of a landed property is renovating his house and is told by the neighbor to show up the share wall. The land which carry such a burden is called the is called the between B and D. Eh? These two, which one is the right one? Let's read carefully. And you decide again, make yourself clear which one is the right answer. Based on this note, which is the right answer? The answer is the real tenement. All right. Question 20. Building A and joint easement of line over building B, which means that there is a high limit imposed on the building B, by owner of building A. What is the land that enjoyed the Eastman known as? Which Eastman known as? What is the land that enjoyed the Eastman known as? What is the answer? Yeah, let's see. Based on this definition, and the answer is C, dominant tenement. Right, question 21. Another question. Freddy is the owner of two adjacent, adjoined plot of land known as Block A and Block B. Block A is located on a higher ground. He sold Block B to Germain. On the express understanding that Germain is not allowed to build any structure of two, more than two stories on block B. So as not to block the light of his house. This restriction placed on Germain is known as which easement or convent. So now I have actually summarized what is positive convenant over here. You can read. Example, to maintain a fence separating the two properties is a positive covenant. What is a negative covenant? Not to build a house exceeding two story. Restrictive covenant runs with the land. Okay, there are no easement or negative easement. So now, the answer will be restrictive covenant. Okay, so now, okay, now question 22. In respect of the lease created, which one of the following is not a requirement for the burden of a covenant to pass to an assignee? Which one? Mm, this one you all have to think again, right? Not many people replying now. Which one? Okay, I can see between A and B. 
let's see the difference between uh, property of estate exists in landlord and tenant relationship is a touch and concern land right positive covenant you already know that is to maintain the fence between the two property so which is answer think carefully the answer is positive covenant all right now let's move on to question 23 in a structure office development, the government imposed a condition that the owners maintain the drain located outside the development. This is an example of structure office development. The government imposed a condition that owners maintain a drain. So which one? Okay. Which one? The definition is there for you. And yes, it's a positive covenant B. Right. Question 24. Henry bought a semi-detached house where M Park prohibit the tree to be more than two meters tall. This prohibition by M Park is known as is known as Now, this is the definition, and for you to remember very easily, summary of that, and the answer is restrictive covenant that runs with the land. Right. I think that the next one is the last question. Olivia sold her next door property to Penny. Can Olivia put a restrictive covenant on Penny's property? Can or cannot? Hey, nobody answer. Or the or the computer hang. <laughs> okay. Or oh, you're thinking. Thinking hard. Okay. For this type of question, when you are trying to attempt during your RES exam, use eliminating method. Strike out the answer that is not possible one you just strike it out and cancel and you were left with uh, one or two choices left then you eliminate already then you decide which one right think carefully because the res question these days is very very tricky right so this will be question will be a yes or leader has can restrict Penny on the use of Penny's property by putting a restrictive covenant on Penny's title before selling the property to Penny. Right. So now, I have actually come to an end of my paper one uh, for 